The sermon for the ninth week after Pentecost is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, uh, chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. Uh, the sermon is entitled, This is Abundance. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Of course, an assumption that you and I would both make. And so it was with the disciples. They assumed from their human wisdom that indeed there is no food but five loaves and two fish. What were they to do? And with a thousand people, thousands of people in the crowd, of course, you and I would agree, send them away to get food for the day is ending. Now Jesus here teaches the disciples a great lesson, a lesson about to where and from, from whom all blessings flow. This is our Lord. Everything flows from our Lord. Our time here, His will is done. Even in suffering, there we stand under the merciful grace of our Lord. Every morning, every night we pray, and I urge you to pray all the time, but here in the Lord's Prayer, the fourth petition, give us this day our daily bread. What does this mean? That God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to all evil people. But we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. Indeed, when we pray, we live under God's care. We very well know that we live under His gracious hand from whom all blessings flow. And there we realize that we thank the Lord that He gives us all that we have. Everything comes from the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is no compartmentalizing. There is no separation. But we very well know that by the Lord, by His mercy, He supplies us in our every need. Not our covetous needs, but what He knows that we need. That He supplies in a myriad of ways. An abundance this is. God's gracious hand is upon us as He gives us what we need. But Lord, it's a desolate place. Yes, a place of desolation, nothing in sight, no sign of food, water, or even life. I can imagine the thoughts running through the disciples' minds. There is nothing here. They must go to the village to buy food. This is the logical reaction, isn't it? To what they had seen through their human eyes, their human eyes, that in desolation, abundance is found elsewhere. Again, Jesus uses this as a teaching moment for the disciples. Even when the eyes see one thing, the faith in God's Word sees another. That even in the midst of desolation, there is Christ, there is the Word, there is the bread of life. Because in Him, there is abundance yesterday, today, and tomorrow, no matter what. No matter what is going on in your life right now, there is and will always be abundance in Christ Jesus. But this is the tension, isn't it? In our lives, constantly, we're in this spiritual battle of asking the question in this tense question, what and where is your abundance? Give us this day our daily bread, yes, to realize that all things come from God, that He is our full supplier, and daily we thank the Lord because He is the giver of all things. Do you believe this? Do you believe it? That He is the supplier of all things. See, friends, there is that tension there, isn't it? All things? Are you sure it's all things? 
I mean, what about that one thing I wanted in my life that, well, I don't have? Well, maybe I have to go out and get it on my own, by my own measure. It seems desolate in my life right now, and, well, I have to find that abundance elsewhere. I need to go away from God's word, not this week, not next week, not next month. I need to go on my own, independent, the devil says to you. Find that abundant life elsewhere. Find it. Because God is not helping you right now. Constantly, this is the devil with his megaphone on and ready, telling you these very words. Again, we all know what that is, don't we? In our sin, we very well know how easy it is to fall to that temptation. But the question is today, what is the abundant life? What is the abundant life to you? Some may say a certain amount in your retirement fund. Others may say a certain career a certain degree, a certain salary, or, or your investments. Yes, these aren't sinful in themselves, of course, but when they become your definition of the abundant life, there we find the tension. Because in this tension we face the covetous chase, the chase for abundance, and soon enough our flesh, well, it tells the same story time and time again as we fail to give thanks to the Lord as we clamor for things and things and more things as if these things that on this chase for abundance will find its fulfillment. Because on this chase, as we know, the devil will always tell you, your life is desolate. Your life is not full. This word that you're hearing, it's just words. Go find it. Help yourself. Go and focus because those things you covet will bring you the comfort that you desire. And soon enough, we go on that path. We get our things and we credit ourselves. And soon we vacate ourselves from the Word of God and soon we think we can sustain ourselves saying me, me, and more me. I think of the times we live in right now as we are here in an outdoor service, of course, and online people at home. It seems deficiency is the house special for the day, doesn't it? It seems like the life we're living right now is a life of desolation, the desolate news of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Headline after headline, it seems. No light at the end of the tunnel as it is forecast, hopes dashed by the latest projections, and we, as we hear these things, what happens? We actually believe that we're desolate. We become fearful, as if we're all alone. As we live in these desolate times, as it plagues and wraps its tentacles around us in our hearts and minds, and yes, our old Adam, our sinful nature, will constantly fall to this. I am not satisfied. I need more. I am at a deficit. Only if I had this, my life would be set, full of earthly riches and security, full of temporal and all of its temporary comforts. Yes, our lives would be set, or so the evil foe says. Even in this pandemic, how this pandemic has really, well, showed us the gauge to which we either have the abundant life or not, honestly. The pandemic is dictating whether our life is comfortable or not. And thus we flee, don't we? In these days of isolation to our own way, to our own thinking, the panic button is pressed and we're all alone, seeking our own mammon and our own idols as if these things will give us what we need for the abundant life. Do you see this tension in your life? Do you see it happening when you hear that news story? Do you see it happening 
when you look at all the things that you think will give you this abundance. But Jesus says, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. Or as our prophet Isaiah would say, come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. He who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money, without price. They need not go away because the Lord provides for you in the here and now. Yes, the world's going away from the word, finding their satisfaction, finding their abundance, finding their own shelter, and we too can fall to this. But yet we are here together. Why? Because we're gathering together in the word, the true bread of life in his presence, as God is with us in our divine service, serving us his words of absolution, serving us his words of mercy, serving us his words of the law and gospel, serving us his own true body and blood in, with, and under that bread and wine given and shed for the forgiveness of our sins. I can't tell you what is more abundant than this. And we are gathered together here this day because here we find our Lord, Jesus. Jesus, who emptied himself, who suffered for each and every one of you. In his great compassion, as we see in our gospel text, he comes to this world, not because you deserve it, but he comes because of his mercy, because we do not deserve it that out of his love, his free gift, nothing of your doing, the Lord swoops down low, mudding himself into this flesh to bring you the abundant life that this world, that you yourself cannot give. Because the only abundance that we have is our Lord, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the one who creates, redeems, and sanctifies you. This is abundance. His word delivering you all that you have right now. Because you are a treasured possession of our Lord, as we heard at VBS this week. You are the treasured possession of the Lord because you are covered by his grace. The poverty of his own son who came to this world emptying himself, taking your sin upon himself. pouring out his gifts to you by his very own sacrifice. The abundance, the words given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This is abundance, right? Isn't it? The declaration that you are his own. Indeed you are. The master accuser could spout out all the accusations all day long. The master accuser could tell you, you are at a deficit and you do not measure up. But Jesus answers the call by hanging and, and being lifted high upon that tree, answering for you, forgiving you of your sins, shutting down the evil foe himself. This is abundance. That no sickness in this world, nothing of this world can separate you from the love of Christ. That is abundance. That death has lost its sting. That Jesus has overcome the world. That he is the resurrection and the life. Death put out of business. Victory over the grave. This is abundance. For you, wrapped in his righteousness, in the water and the word were there. The fears are quelled. The fears are quelled. His word is your faith, is your trust. And there we find who we are as we live in his glory. This is abundance. 
the food that we eat, the foretaste of the feast to come, the medicine of immortality, the food that satisfies as we flock together Sunday after Sunday to receive the body and blood of our Lord present with us, giving to us the tangible gift, the true gift, the promise-filled gift that here we have His body and blood given and shed for the forgiveness of our sins. This is abundance. I know we search for it in our sinful nature, but by His Word, here we have it. There is no deficiency. There is no emptiness. There is no 99% and we need that 1% to be filled. But all of it, Jesus is your abundance. There is no need to go away. There is no need to look elsewhere. Because here you have it, all of it. The gospel, only Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. Through all uncertainty of the time, yes, I know, friends. It might seem very bleak. Desolate might be the description of the times that we are living. And of course, there is great cause of concern and, and great fear. But fear not. Because your abundance is not assumed by human wisdom. But rather, your abundance is the word that endures forever. Because in Christ, there is no other. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow... And forever, we need not go away. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.